So with the recent addition of the base R pipe, um, I wanted to make a video kind of telling you guys why I still prefer the McRitter pipe and some tricks to make your piping better. So let me create a pipe in a new R file. Let me put this to the side. Cool. So the new base R pipe, in case you don't know it, it's a pipe and a greater than sign um, together. So with my font, it gives me a triangle. Um, well, MVMR is not letting me do it. But if I do empty cars, then a pipe, it's going to give me a triangle. And here I can use any function from any package, for example, filter, miles per gallon equals 21. And it returns um, a data frame where miles per gallon equals 21. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if we do it with McRitter, let me call in McRitter and we do empty cars, the pipe we all know and love, the plier filter miles per gallon equals 21. It's gonna give me the exact same result. Data frame where miles per gallon equals 21. So, okay, they work pretty similarly. What's the benefit of using the McGregor pipe or why should you use or not use the base R pipe? There's some reasons, for example, um, Let's say we have a function called miles per gallon filter. It's going to be a function with a value and a data frame. And uh, what it does, it's going to fill, it's going to, let me, the plier filter. It's going to bring in the data frame and it's going to do n miles per gallon equals 21. So this function, if we use the new base R pipe, it's if I do here miles per gallon filter 21, it's not going to work. It's going to tell me it's expecting a double. Why? Because this empty cars is not going into the data frame argument. It's actually going to the value argument. So this 21, is there a data frame and value would be the empty car. So yeah, it's, it breaks. With McGritter, what you can do is the following. You can use miles per gallon filter as usual, 21, and then you could do df equals dot. This dot represents the, the piped object, so empty cars. So if I run it, it works, it gives me back the data frame where miles per gallon equals 21. So that, that's perfect. Um, there's also some stuff, oh, for now, the base R doesn't have any dot or symbol that represents the piped object. So that's a real bummer because you can't do many things like that. Okay, what other benefits can do it does the McGritter one have? Let's say we have do filter um, check. Let's set this to a Boolean. Um, let's say this is in R reactive or uh, a shiny reactive value or an input or whatever. So let's say this this changes with time. Um, in the base R way, you would have to do this. So let's say the filter is true, then it's going to filter miles per gallon equals 21. If it's false, it's going to filter everything that's not 21, for example. So if filter check, um, we would have to do like a you would have to do empty cars. Um, okay, let's put the base R. Deplier filter miles per gallon equals 21. And then we would have to do else and then empty cars. Um, Deplier filter miles per gallon is not equal to 21. And then we close. So we execute this. Oh, let me. Um, it's going to give us back the one that's 21 because, well, of course it would. But OK, so this is cool and all, but what if the pipe is much more complex? What if after the filter or before the filter, we would have to also um, mutate MPG2 
is going to be equal to miles per gallon times two. And then we do this. And what if, okay, we do the same right here. So let me put the, the new pipe and let me put the player here. There you go. Just so, just so we get no errors. Okay, and then what if after the filter, we also have um, select, and we only select miles per gallon and miles per gallon too. And let me put in again, deep fire. So as you can see, we are repeating quite a lot of code. Um, there's a bunch of space that, well, we could be using much better, but we're not. So if we execute this, it should give us, yep, the only the two columns, MPG2, MPG. If we turn this to false now, it should give us, well, all the other values. But we're repeating, look, we repeated um, one, two, three, we repeated three lines twice, and what if there's three or four conditions to be met? Um, this can easily get way worse in a shiny application. So what can you do? With the McGritter pipe, we could do the following. Empty cars, the McGritter pipe, and then we could open some braces. If, um, no, well, first we would do the mutate because the mutate goes for both. So the deep fire, mutate uh, miles per gallon two equals miles per gallon times two pipe again now here comes our conditional because it's the only thing that changes so here we would do a uh, if filter check and then here we could do filter dot remember this dot the uh, piped object so this would be this whole thing um so filter dot well, miles per gallon equals 21. Um, we can close this, else we can filter again, dot, where miles per gallon is not equal to 21. And then we can finally close this. Um, if we were to execute right here, it would execute this first two lines, but we're missing one. So pipe again, and deep fire, select, Miles per gallon and miles per gallon too. I forgot to put deep fire here. Deep fire. Deep fire. Cool. So if we execute this, um, let me turn this back to true. We get the answer that we wanted. We get uh, miles per gallon equals 21 and the columns miles per gallon, miles per gallon too. So here we are literally not repeating any code. Um, this is much more concise, and in my opinion, it's easier to understand as long as you get the this dot object. So yeah, that's why I would still use the McGreer pipe. Um, I think it's awesome that there's a pipe now in base R, but um, this dot is really helpful, really really helpful, especially in here. Yeah, uh, I use this daily pretty much. So, yep, that's pretty much it for the video. I just wanted to show you this little trick for piping with conditionals and why I still prefer the McGregor pipe. Thank you so much for watching.